Hello, my name is Brandi Hofer, your host of the Color Me Happy podcast. I am so glad you're here. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. If you want more weekly content just like this, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we cannot wait for you to be a part of our community here and you can join our free community on Facebook. It is about empowering your community through your creativity and we want you to be there. Um, we are, I am Brandy. I am a Canadian artist, author, mother and educator, obviously podcaster because <laughs> I'm here chatting with you right now. Um, we talk about on the podcast everything from scaling your business from zero to six figures, um, motherhood, um, lots of women's health, very unfiltered conversations there. Um, we have on some extremely amazing guests. I don't even know how I talk to them really, but they said yes. And we want to talk about just, we want to empower you. We want to talk about those things. We want to empower you to reach out to people who you never thought you'd talk to, ask for opportunities that you'd never thought you'd get because we want you to see your everyday as extraordinary just as we have. We shifted from being like this whole hum kind of um, victim complaining kind of person with terrible money mindset, really bad, hiding like money mindset books under my, like waddling around pregnant, <laughs> hiding my mindset book, uh, money mindset book, being ashamed of wanting money. But the thing about um, that is that if you want to grow, if you want to expand, if you want the life that you live, that's one of the things you need that will help you along your way. And then you'll inspire others to do the same. It'll be a really cool journey. So come along with us and uh, we cannot wait. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out on Instagram at Brandy Hofer Studios anytime. I'm happy to chat. That's where I sit and I'm so Glad you're here and I cannot wait for you to dive in. So give us a like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to Color Me Happy Podcast. My name is Brandy Hofer, your host. Thank you so much for being here. Happy summer. Um, we are having such a good time. I'm packing right now. I'm in full boxer braid. Uh, it's plus 30 above so hot 32 degrees, which is super hot for where we're from. Um, I'm packing up for a mural tomorrow. So very exciting stuff um, and we've been working we just got home from Montreal so we've been we've been adventuring it was so cool and so fun and it's such a good family vacation spot like there's so much to do for kids but also the food and everything is so you can get me anywhere if there's good food pretty much I'll be like I'll just eat here next thanks and you guys do whatever you want um, so I ate my way through Montreal and honestly there's just like good food and coffee around every corner so it was pretty awesome it's one of my favorite cities in the world it is my favorite city in the world um, so we had a blast and we've been working in our sketchbooks uh, you can go to Brandy Hover Studios on Instagram or anywhere really and find our sketchbook project it's totally free to sign up it's super fun um, it's a good way to spend time together creating this summer uh, Teddy and I sit on our front step and we work in our sketchbooks together uh, the other two kids are too cool now they're too cool for mom <laughs> so oh I gotta bring my mic here sorry about that um, yeah so my my mic in my coffee cup we're real high tech around here. Um, yeah, so sign up for that. It's so much fun. It'll get you outside. It'll get you creating. Um, and last week we talked to Jenna about, um, or the week before, about even in the busy times of motherhood, like she loves, she looks for, she like really clings on to her sketchbook practice. Um, and because it gets the ball rolling, it gets your ideas churning. Um, if you're wanting to create more or like I know pattern work and stuff always ends up showing up in my larger pieces too so uh, having a good sketchbook practice is really important um, but don't put my it's also just for fun so that's what I love about it like you can like do whatever and it doesn't matter um, yeah so can't wait to see you there I love this conversation with Twiggy <laughs> Twiggy um, she is amazing. I've known her for a long time and Twiggy Boyer Art, she's on Instagram. Um, that's how we met. We have a, a friend, 
uh, Juliana Naufel from, she's Brazilian, uh, and they have Photo Trouvé, tr Photo Trouvé magazine together. Um, so it's, and a community, Photo Trouvé community, which is formed on people who create with found um, collage material, like found <laughs> images. Okay, just listen to the podcast. It's really good. It's about balancing motherhood and creativity and you'll just find so much joy in it she's a very interesting individual and a very talented artist thanks for being here friend and stuff like that sure so i was born in france um in paris and i moved to the u.s for uh high school around 2003 or four i think <laughs> Um, and then I moved to South Florida with my family. I went to high school here. And then um, I got my BFA uh, in Baltimore, Maryland at the Maryland Institute College of Art. Um, and I graduated in 2012. I stayed up there um, a little bit after graduation. Um, and then I came back down to South Florida I guess 10 years ago, it was supposed to be temporary, but <laughs> here we are. So um, as far as my art practice, I'm a mixed media collage artist. Um, I work with vintage found photographs and um, painting, uh, collaging, drawing, um, sometimes embroidery. Um, and I work around themes of uh, stories and memories and connections. Mm hmm. Uh, so actually, oddly enough, your work reminds me of like a whole bunch of postcards and like vintage materials that I found in Paris. And so do you think that influenced like your work early on? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't think it's ever... like a weird coincidence. <laughs> it might be a weird coincidence. Yeah. Yeah, because like. It always just, yeah, reminds me of my time there. And then, of course, my mother-in-law really connects to it, too, because, like, she's French, so she loves your work because it reminds her of, like, moments with, like, memories, like you said, like, moments with her own mother and and stuff like that. So it's very gorgeous work. If um, anyone has not seen Twiggy's work, they should go look on Instagram because it's just gorgeous. Um, my favorite piece is the one you did of your grandmother um okay. i can't remember anyone's names but i can remember singular artworks <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. and when you made them and why <laughs> yeah that one was yeah it was sort of like a an artwork made um through grieving just after losing her and i didn't really know what else to do so <laughs> what do we do when we don't know we just turn to art right mm -hmm. it yeah, I talked to Mona about that. She, we're all member, we're art queens. Um, and she talked a lot about creating through grief. And I had realized that like through the loss of my own mother, like how important and how lucky and fortunate I was to have artwork as an outlet um, through those stages, because obviously they are so traumatic and like, the only thing that really heals it is the passing of time. So we're really lucky. Um, and if someone who is listening doesn't um, doesn't identify as an artist, like creativity is for everyone. And there's always like ways you can be creative to heal. So um, it's always an option as an outlet. Uh, okay, so then in you're in South Florida and you live with your daughter and partner or just yeah. seven-year-old daughter and my partner so yeah and you create so you create at home and um but you also decided to what's your homeschooling page called because it's adorable as well <laughs> it's called homeschool with moon uh because my daughter's middle name is moon so i didn't want to make it too um too obvious or like I don't like to post her too much, so I don't want to have like too many um, information and things. So this was like a good, it was kind of a cute name and it worked out. So that's why I picked it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I know. I 
I've stopped posting Teddy so much because he was starting to get recognized. <laughs> like, and they were like, like people would be like, Teddy. <laughs> like, oh gosh, yeah, this is not. Um, but I feel like I'm like, you know, it might be safer. Like, if he ever got sold, people would recognize him everywhere. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. <laughs> Locally, yeah, I guess. Well, I mean, we were all trapped for a while there, and he brought a lot of humor and stuff to the... And one woman did stop me in the grocery store, and she's like, Teddy was one of the reasons, and she would message me a lot, but she's like, he was one of the reasons like that like kept me going during the pandemic, like his bright little adventures. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that is... It's insane. That's uh, so it was nice. But um, so I love, is it a challenging balance? Well, I know, but for you, <laughs> what is the balance like for you with motherhood and having a creative practice that's somewhat like sustainable? Mm -hmm. It's a, uh... It's a challenging balance, <laughs> as you probably know. So I think it just, it fluctuates. Um, there are times when I have more uh, time for my creative practice, and there are times and seasons when I have to focus more on uh, motherhood, um, especially with homeschooling. It's, it's a little chaotic. <laughs> the schedule is really full to the brim at all times. Like, I just feel like I try to have um, everything pretty organized and just kind of chunks of the day dedicated to different things. Um, but I think something I've learned with this journey of trying to quote unquote do it all is just that you can do it all, but you can't do it all at 100%. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't do it all at once. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sometimes you're more, you have more time to focus on one thing and other times, you know, you have more time for that other thing and you have to kind of be okay with it because that's just part of the journey. And um, I just, when I get frustrated, if I don't have enough studio time or um, enough time for my own artwork, because life, I guess, um, I try to think that you know, it's just a season and it's not always going to be like this. Um, and there's probably a time when we'll be, we'll have so much studio time because our kids will be grown up and it'll be, it just makes me sad to think about it. So it makes me excited and sad. So it's just. Yeah, it's, like, it's a mix. <laughs> You're like, I want the freedom, but I want them to still like need and love me. Yeah, exactly. So which they will, they will in a different, a different way, right? Mm -hmm. And oh, it is so hard. It is so hard to like, first of all, mentally move from one task to the other and be like, well, I guess I'm not doing that today. And like, and then being present in what you are doing, right? Um, mm -hmm. It takes a lot of like conscious effort and just like, uh, kind of, I guess, like go with it attitude, like go with the flow. Um, they're always, and I know you're good at this because we booked our calendars and you were like, I have this time block for this. So I need to do that. Um, and that is probably the number one tool is like blocking out time for times when you need it. Um, and times for admin or creativity or whatever your job looks like, um, or just time where you can be you simply mm -hmm. is important as well. Um, which I find with our careers is really cool because like, besides like admin and editing and stuff that I do for that and like social media, like the other stuff, it's fun kind of, I'm not saying it's not fun, but it's harder. Um, mm -hmm. But as a creative, like it's cool because what we do is like fun and it feels like our alone time. Mm -hmm. So it's like this beautiful gift that we can lean on and it's like restorative for the most part, like 75% of the time. <laughs> like I'm sure you do a lot of packaging and shipping, um, yeah. which I, 
I'm like, remember that it's you're selling the artwork. So this <laughs> like is just like I like writing the note, but like the physica physically like going out and packing and delivering like with three kids. Like I'm like, you know, I have to change my practice right now. That was like one of the things for me. But I know that that is probably um with smaller pieces that regularly sell is more of a thing for you. Yeah, and also um, with the magazines, just packing those. But oh, it, you don't do drop shipping for the magazine? No, uh, I'm the one who does oh, brutal. All <laughs> <laughs> you should think about changing that. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's okay. You know, it just with the magazine, it's actually easier to pack and ship stuff because it just. Um, uploads in the in our shipping uh, carrier platform and then I just go in and print the label and you know stick it on you have, a, you have a system yeah so that's easier but for sure like packing artworks and prints and things takes it takes longer especially when you want to have like a personalized note and you want to make it like you know put a little bow on it or you want to make your collectors feel special but that also because they are like they're <laughs> yeah. investing in you and they are so connected and by the way you have the best notes and special treats just Thank for anyone <laughs> interested in getting Twiggy's work um i loved i i need to get some more yeah i loved your packages and the way you you did all that you do a fantastic job um do you want to talk about your magazine and how that happened and how when we collaborate, we can do something even like we can do things alone, but I, we shouldn't, we should always like work together because things are just more beautiful and they're, um, they go beyond what you were capable of alone. Yeah, definitely. That's like spot on. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, in 2020, I started a, um, at first it was a digital uh, art publication that um, puts forth uh, found photo artists or family photos, but just artists who work with uh, vintage photographs um, in their work in any capacity. It could be we've had like sculptors and we've had painters. And as long as it's inspired by a found photographs, you know, they're um, in our community, basically. Um, and I started that with a friend. Um, an artist who also works with found photographs, uh, Juliana Nalfo. Um, and yeah, we just, uh, we kind of felt like artists who work with um, collage or embroidery, found photographs were just not, um, I guess not as respected or as um, celebrated as maybe painters or, you know, sculptors or, more traditional uh, art forms. Um, and as artists that worked with found photographs ourselves, we felt like we didn't really know that many other artists who uh, worked with that medium. And um, we found each other and we saw sort of like what, um, how beautiful it is to find other people who understand what you're doing. <laughs> because yeah. I think a lot of people are a little bit uh, not confused, but they don't always get it. And that's okay, you know, that's art in general. Um, so we started this digital magazine um, and it just evolved into a lot more. So now it's a print magazine and um, we also have uh, virtual exhibitions. Um, we started having virtual artist residencies um, we just launched a uh, membership platform and um, it's just been the most amazing journey um, <laughs> that I've been on because we've just met so many artists, we've worked with so many artists and I just never imagined that there would be that many artists working with found photographs or who had a passion for vintage photographs and it's just been amazing. Um, and I think as far as working as a team, um, you know, you had it spot on because bringing 
you know, two people together, you're bringing um, two sets of strengths. And so you can kind of bounce off of each other for the different aspects of running a business, running a platform, running a magazine. Um, and yeah, you can kind of ping pong off of each other's strengths and weaknesses and fill in where it needs to be, so. And accountability too. Definitely, yeah. It, it de yeah, <laughs> fast forward <laughs> things. I was creating a diversify your income um, class with my friend Shannon, who is Canadian, but was in Finland and now she's in Italy. And I w <laughs> that would have taken me like a year normally and uh to create it and we just kind of decided in december and we launched it like mid-january and i was getting up so early to like finish it and you know because you're both excited and you're both like let's do this and then let's do that and meet here and this is when we should finish it and yeah accountability is huge if it's the right fit too like finding the right fit is first the roots of the the project, right? Yeah, um, Cause that's always a catastrophe if you let it go on too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wanna find the right people. Um, yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> and you're not even in the same place, right? So you've made this work across an ocean, correct? Uh, yes, she's uh, in Brazil and now uh, part-time based in New York. But when we started, she was solely based in Brazil and I'm here in Florida um in real life i we've only met three times <laughs> um but we meet weekly twice or three times a week uh on zoom so we have like zoom uh meetings to work scheduled um and it's definitely like uh when you stop and think about it it's like an odd way to have a friendship but it works and you know it's kind of amazing to be able to do that and to have different you know part of our community also that is something that we really love is having an international community and people from all around the world and you just get um different cultures that come into play and you get so many different perspectives from different places in the world that wouldn't otherwise happen if let's say i was just working with florida artists or something like that Mm hmm. I bet that's super cool. And it seems so weird because when I met uh, like Kat and Juliana and Victoria and who else was there? Oh, this is when names come into <laughs> play for me. It just felt like, oh, Alicia was there, but she was mostly at because we were there for PXP showing at um, an art fair. But like it felt like we had even though we just knew each other online for like four or five years, like for some of us like two like it was it just felt like we had all met so many times before mm -hmm. except for the height thing the height thing threw me off like juliana was so tall and i'm kind of tall so we were like the same size i guess compared that like alicia and cat i thought were tall and they weren't <laughs> it was like shocking at first which probably bothers people who aren't tall, which I was like, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that. <laughs> That's so funny because the first time I met Juliana, I had the same, I'm very short. So <laughs> I had the same kind of feeling. I was like, whoa, she's a lot taller than I imagined. <laughs> right, but you probably didn't like announce it out loud. <laughs> wow, you're so tall. <laughs> you're super short. Yeah um sometimes you need to you get that I, I need to get fil a filter on but um <laughs> i was just so excited <laughs> like i was so excited to meet everyone and it was it was awesome and we, then we went for tacos and donuts so it made it even better but That's yeah it's pretty cool like the great people you can connect with um now and that's why i think people should always think about um communities and social media in a really positive way because otherwise you wouldn't get to connect with those people who are interested in found photos or um have those same 
uh, struggles and things that you're going through in terms of like other mother artists or like it gives you the opportunity to connect and thrive in this really cool way. Yeah, for sure. I think um, when I left my job uh, end of 2019, um, I was teaching full-time uh, art kindergarten through uh, fifth grade. I don't know if it's the same in Canada, but <laughs> you're like, oh no. <laughs> um, I, I don't think that, I didn't really know what was going to happen and having um, kind of these being part of collage communities. And then um, at the time there was uh, artist mother podcast and just being part of those communities really kind of helped me not be so alone. Cause it can be, it can be a lonely experience to be an artist, I think. And especially when you're in a community where there aren't like art galleries, you know, on every street corner. Um, but even so, even if, there are a million artists around you. It can feel really lonely. So mm -hmm. yeah, online communities is, it's a really beautiful part of this practice, I think. Yeah, I'm so happy because I'm like, I'm a really lazy friend. That's why Juliana, <laughs> Juliana is so good because she always messages me. <laughs> I love it. Um, but that's why I'm like, I have to continue to have a podcast because that's how I talk with my friends. Mm -hmm. and so it's it holds me accountable in a way um, to keep connecting um, and having conversations. And then the beautiful gift from that, of course, is like being able to inspire and connect with other people beyond the podcast. Um, mm -hmm. How are you finding your membership and community? What platform are you hosting on? Um, so it just launched uh, on February 1st. Oh, good for you. So it's, uh, you know, today is March. So it just one month ago. Um, we're using Patreon uh, just because we were thinking, um, we researched a lot of different platforms and, you know, we thought, okay, Patreon is, it's a good fit at least to start because it's very established. Um, everything's kind of built in to the platform um and so that's what we picked but um so far it's going really great we're doing two live calls per month um so one call is like a studio call where um the members can join live and come together and just work in their studios on whatever they're working on so again kind of touching on this um idea of like sometimes being in the studio can feel a little bit lonely and just being able to exchange and connect in that way. Um, and then the other call is uh, a like an arts professional, either an artist from our community or um, someone who can come in and talk about the art world um, or little mini workshops. So those are the other calls that we have um, throughout the month. And so far I feel like it's been it's been really beautiful to get to connect with people that we've worked with with the magazine or um you know in an exhibition or we've worked with so many that it's hard to get new people I guess which is a good thing but it's great to connect with them in a different way in a different space and yeah it's been really great oh good for you yeah I love that um and Again, the accountability factor, because when you are uh, creative, it can be so isolating. And I think a lot of people did shift from um, working out of the home to into the home, which is nice, especially if you have uh, a family and then you can like balance your time if you're motivated in that way and organized. Yeah. Um, and your partner can be flexible as well. I think that's important. Um, but as far as seeing people, it's it's really important to see people and we don't really know that that's why i love our art academy i go out and work in the schools on tuesdays and thursdays mm -hmm. and we have school there for a little while and it was february so i was like i felt so like tired and depressed and i was like why am i feeling so crappy and it was like i needed that seeing people element 
to like fill my cup back up and get out there. Um, so memberships are awesome for that because you're like, even if you don't feel like going that day or, um, and, or are not looking forward to it. Most of the time when you do get there, you're mm -hmm. like, this is actually really good for me. I'm so glad I did it. Right. Definitely. For sure. And also it forces, now I can tell my daughter, well, this is a studio hour. You can't interrupt. We have a call. So we're live on the call. I know. <laughs> because, you know, if I'm just saying, I'm in the studio, I'm going to be interrupted at least six times. And that's being nice. But <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to actually create a Mario land on top of your desk and <laughs> not let you paint at all or I want to do exactly what you're doing, but only for seven minutes so <laughs> I can make the biggest mess in the world and then I'll leave because mm -hmm. I have three boys and they don't <laughs> sit there. They just, yeah, they just like are mess bombs. So um, everyone, I remember like a lot of calls and whatever, when I was like a guest on stuff, the number one question was like, how do you create with your kids? I'm like, well, there's times for creating with your kids and then there's times where you don't. They're like, oh, I just thought you did it with them the whole time. I'm like, um, have you been around three boys before? <laughs> yeah, I feel like Teddy got the raw end of that deal because like, I had so much one-on-one -on -one time with the first two um, mm -hmm. and we did create a lot together. Um, but uh he just it's just like chaos all day and all night yeah. so which is fine it's just the way it is but um yeah you definitely have to like calendar in your alone your alone times or get into like a routine which always changes yeah that's right? the thing that's where i've struggled too is i'm trying to be very like intentional like okay this is gonna be my studio time and obviously that's not always going to happen just because it's you know the moods and the emotions and things just like shift all the time in the household and it just doesn't really work that way but i think the best you can do is just plan for it and try it out you know and if if that day doesn't work out then it just doesn't work out like it yeah it be flexible and like children are all different like quiet time worked for my son finn like he was solid, loved to be by himself and Teddy would nap and I would have like three free hours in the afternoon, which was insane. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And it lasted about a year and a half. And that's how I wrote my book and, <laughs> and planned out like a huge business shift with my studio manager. She would come and we would plan and it was awesome. And Finn loved his alone time. But then, yeah, it all changes. And Teddy doesn't have alone time. Mm -hmm. He is my number one fan. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he has energy. So it's mostly like energy. To, how do we burn energy together? And then, yeah. And then at night, I'm totally exhausted. So with Gus, I worked at night. And with, yeah, Finn, I worked during the day and Teddy. And then now it's, they're all in hockey. So it's just complete chaos. So now I've been trying to get up one hour before them, which works sometimes. But again, like you said, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to, all of a sudden you decide, okay, I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. And that's the day that they wake up at 5 a.m. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> or they're up all night with like That's something. It. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's, it's chaotic for sure. And I just have one. So <laughs> I'm in awe in front of you because you have three. So that's, that's a lot. Yeah. I was thinking the other day, I was like, what can I drop? Because <laughs> I can't seem to do anything at all right now but i was also just in the february bad mood so mm -hmm. i'm coming out of it the sun is shining and i'm like it's march and i'm back yay <laughs> you gotta just like if you're tired be tired if you're mm -hmm. not feeling up to it just don't do just do the like bare minimum and then when you are capitalize it i call it in my book Bre be brave days and it's just like do all you can in that awesome day because 
as we know, as women and as parents, like we might not get that day tomorrow. Like we might yeah. not sleep or we might, you know, something <laughs> could happen or your child is sick or whatever. Yeah. If you have a day and there, I, I think I said in my book, if this, if you feel like the sun is shining out your ass, <laughs> do everything you can in that day, humanly possible that you can think of, make a list and cross some shit off right mm -hmm. yeah that's that's good advice <laughs> yeah yeah i'm feeling it today and i hope the rest of the day works out <laughs> oh yeah that would be good <laughs> yeah but um like and uh as like women i feel like um we don't ask for or demand uh time for for ourselves or for what we have to do and i think if you are really stubborn about um, your time or even like having your businesses considered a real business. I talked about that with Courtney. I don't think I talked about it with Courtney Florence on the podcast, but after she's like, yeah, like people don't consider my business a business and it mm -hmm. is a business. So first of all that, but, um, have you uh, had struggles in that way? Like, um, being considered or taken seriously, like your time is important and your business is important? Yeah, I think that's something I struggle with a lot because I'm not good at asking for help. Um, I'm working on it, but <laughs> it's tough and we don't, um, we don't really have access to childcare, even though I have family close, um, it just doesn't happen. So it's, you know, it's tough. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta like force yourself to ask for help. And um, sometimes when you're trying to manage, you know, everyone in your household and you've got one that's, I don't know, going through a growth spurt and you know that, you know, she's super sensitive right now. And you have like a partner who's in a bad mood because he had a lot of meetings at work that day and you're just like trying to manage everyone and sometimes it's easy to forget about yourself and I think that's hard for me to be like hey you know this is also my work and why do I have to do this work but also at the same time cater you know to taking care of our child or so that you know it's it's hard. It's like really difficult to manage. I don't know how. I think you're pretty good at saying like, you know, this is my time. I'm I'm doing it or from what I've seen. But I'm sure you struggle with it too. I'm disgustingly stubborn. <laughs> so, um but I I like that. I think it's a good thing because um expectations and rules and Melinda Gates talks about this in her book. Um that like in north america and she lists the country she has the stats and data like it's 30 to 60 percent more un like unpaid labor so unpaid labor for women uh specific or anyone uh specifically in the household like laundry um uh, cleaning and stuff like that so unpaid labor um or accounting and books in your household and like daily tasks yeah women are 30 take on 30 to 60 percent more uh than if if it's like a male female partner mm -hmm. uh ship so i like i've taken that into consideration because she has 20 years of data like she went all over the world and her book is so good i recommend it to anyone um and when you um think about language and then roles in a household and establishing maybe new routines and new roles and uh i think it takes a long time to get into the it does it it's an everyday struggle um and it's an everyday conversation and um my partner definitely has evolved into, and we've had, he doesn't like the conversations. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, so, you know, when you grew up, you were expected to, like, you didn't want to, but then you eventually did take over your dad's business. And then, um, 
and everyone was fine with that and everyone expected you to be able to do it and you have a physical business and my business is online so my time is as equally important and um uh, my goals are as equally important and the roles in the household need to be divvied up <laughs> in the best way possible um so we both have time to work play with our children do extracurriculars have like probably that's the one that falls the most is time together mm -hmm. <laughs> uh but because it is hard no one's gonna take our three boys for very long that's yeah. They are so sweet, but like they're really hard to be around. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it is an everyday thing, but you just have to not give in. Like it's like today I was like, I'm podcasting and we've had lots of conversations and lots of head bunting together. Uh, like you need to because Friday's my day. So it's like you're looking after the kitchen and that needs to be done before you go. And you're taking the boys because one's sick, of course, and Teddy's right. here and you are doing something. Mm -hmm. And because it's your day at home and it's my day to work. And um, so that's what happened. And it, and if it doesn't happen, I'm pretty mean. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And it's just like this, you know, I guess conversations, ongoing conversations about that. And we did talk, we've talked about this language on our podcast with Jill Kelly, and we've talked about it um, with uh, Heather um, Sinfield um, on relationships and communication. So uh, it, it, I support women in you know, taking on their passions. And it, it is just like, we have the power to do some amazing things in the world. And the more we ask and demand for our time um, and that our passions are valued, I think the world will become a better place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think a lot about when I struggle with it, just that my daughter is watching and you know, one day she will have a partner, you know, whatever kind of partner, but I want her to be able to have those conversations and to have those expectations. Um, so that's how I'm forcing myself to do it. And I think essentially- Unfortunately, forcing yourself because your role was yeah. given to you, right? Exactly. And I think for me, it's the, the work is about, um, feeling comfortable with like an uncomfortable uh, response in a way, because I have a very supportive partner. Um, and, you know, when we're talking about it, having conversations, you know, he's all for it. But sometimes when the time comes, it's a different story. <laughs> Get off your fucking phone. <laughs> and so yeah. kind of being like assertive and being comfortable with like, well, you know, I'm sorry, you don't like it, but so that's where it's hard for me because at the core I'm a people pleaser just because of childhood things and so mm -hmm. I'm trying really hard to just okay well you know I'm I don't like it all the time but I'm asking it, is exhausting too oh uh, yeah that's <laughs> so that's like another thing right why do we have why should you have to ask mm -hmm. so I think just like yeah, continually going over expectations. Mm -hmm. No one's got it figured out either. I don't have yeah. it figured out, you know? <laughs> it's yeah. just you do your best and everyone does their best and, and that is the expectation. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we're both here and we're both doing our best. And sometimes, you know, it gets left and and we didn't, we didn't make it or we didn't clean up or we didn't whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But um, it is a partnership. It is a 50-50 role. And we're just trying to get through the day, right? Yeah, exactly. That just gets yeah. through it. <laughs> yeah. That's, and stay, you know, you want to stay like as a team. You want to stay on the same page about things. Because if you start, like, if one person is thinking one thing and the other person is like on a total different headspace, I think, especially with kids, like it just can get, really chaotic really fast so 
yeah, like you said, just being kind of on the same page and having uncomfortable <laughs> um, feelings and conversations too. That's a shared important. calendar is always good. Yeah, I started that this year actually. Cause yeah. I, I do a kitchen calendar, which is my lifeline. So I handwrite everything, but apparently that still wasn't enough. <laughs> you know, it's right here. <laughs> so I doubled it <laughs> to a Google calendar that's shared with the family, but apparently that's still not enough. <laughs> you know, I actually had, and I can't say a lot because I had a, I did um, have a conflict with a family member um, and they said that maybe we needed to communicate better i said that well i write it down and there's a shared calendar so i feel like that's enough <laughs> with reminders um so i don't know any more conversations i could have on top of that so <laughs> go f yourself i'm just like i'm walking away my blood is boiling up to here and it is it is frustrating and and um and I know this isn't the case for everyone, but like I feel if Melinda Gates has 20 years of data that <laughs> lean on her data um to be pretty accurate. Yeah. Well just um, like the just like the constant thinking about things in your brain already is just like I don't know, a million hours of unpaid labor. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like you you never I don't know about you but I never stop thinking like I'm always and sometimes I'll say something and um my partner will say like well why did you bring that up it's like well because I'm going through in my head like checklist 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 and you know I just have to like get it out and so just like constantly thinking about stuff is so exhausting <laughs> oh my gosh yeah <laughs> yeah um that's why I'm like exhibitions are like a night away. So I'm like, <laughs> like I'll just have an exhibition, even though they're very stressful as well. But I'm like, at least I get a night away. Yeah. Or like a meeting somewhere else. But <laughs> that's why, yeah, it's important to have your passions and your business and your own things. Um, it's very important. It's your freedom. It's it's your life. And um should own it should own yeah. your own life and you should own your own time and you should take up space and ask for it and you deserve it um so uh that is our time i am so glad we got to talk it went really fast <laughs> of course um and uh where can everyone find you online uh so i'm on instagram um at twiggy boyer art um, and then my website is www.sarahtwiggyboyer.com. Um, and for the magazine, we're at uh, Photo Trouvé magazine. So <laughs> I think I called it Photo Trouvé or something. It's like I, I was like, I don't think I got that right <laughs> when I was on Instagram this morning. And I, so I'm like, oh, that's my name thing. But I love how you say it. So I'll say it correctly the next time. Um, it was so good to see you and uh, we will chat soon. Feel free to reach out anytime. And um, I know one day we'll all meet in person and it'll be amazing. I hope so. Thank you so much for having me and thinking of me. Yeah, yeah anytime. Please know that you can always reach out at Brandy Hofer Studios on Instagram anytime and be sure to check us out on YouTube at Brandy Hofer Studios Color Me Happy where we are now pouring a lot of free tips and a lot of fun information and in every one of our podcasts on there. We also have our book Color Me Happy, See Your Everyday Ordinary as Extraordinary and our Color Me Happy community on Facebook, which is free to join, where we uplift members and we do member features as well as features our members on our Color Me Happy podcast. We can't wait to hear from you. Please share everything you're working on and feel free to post in our Color Me Happy community any of your process shots or any questions you have for the group. We're happy to answer them in there as well. And we thank you so much for your time today. We sure do appreciate it. 
and have the most beautiful day. Thank you so much for being here. If you're looking for some time for yourself to relax, release and unwind, Oasis has the perfect space for you. They offer yoga and spin classes of all levels. Whether you are a beginner or advanced student, Oasis thrives on accommodating all aspects of the practice. Let their serene environment and gracious staff help you in your journey of peace, healing, and strength. Sign up online at www.oasishotyogastudio.com or by downloading the Oasis Hot Yoga Studio app. Feel like yourself. You deserve it. Thank you so much to our supporters and our community partners. We could not do this podcast and outreach and projects in our community without you. Um, That is Red Bicycle Communications. Um, They are so amazing. They uplift in so many ways in our community. Um, Jill started her business and she talks about it on the podcast. So Jill Kelly, check out that first episode. She's come on a few times um, and and empowered others along the way. So um, she's grown her own business and her vision. And she was even featured in the Toronto Star, I believe. Um, Is that the right newspaper? Hopefully. (laughs) Um, It was very cool. It was a very cool business feature because she was like, I'm going to try this out in my community and we'll see if it works and if it doesn't. And obviously it's been like probably more than a decade since and they're doing really well and they have founded the Women in Business Awards. So I'm very proud to be um, a partner with them. We have Nouveau Laser and Aesthetic Center. Uh, I love them so much. They make me feel good in my own skin. It's one of my biggest touch points and what I'm most self-conscious about. And I recently have been starting to get my some of my tattoos removed that I got when I was 16 and 19. <laughs> so obviously I didn't think those through, but it doesn't hurt, which was very cool and very surprising. So they are the only people locally who do tattoo removal and of course, um, Uh, face treatments and a whole bunch of another like laser hair removal and an array of you can do injections and a whole bunch of stuff so check Nouveau out Um, we also have BioClean Disaster Services Um, they have they're they're so wonderful and their mission is I love their mission statements and their values it's to uplift uh, community and community through women and children so um, what happened and I remember talking to them about this when we initially partnered is what happens when you empower females is they live a better life and if they have children um, then they raise better children um, and that is the way that to empower community and growth and um, I guess like challenge the poverty cycle in in a way so um, yeah so I, I love I love talking to them about that and in our initial uh, our initial conversations of when they became a partner um, and they have helped us along the way with mural washing and a lot of different uh, projects around the city so I love them so much and um, they do a wonderful job because I mean it's for uh, like use it like if your basement got a flood for some strange reason reason like that's your most vulnerable time in your life and um they're there for you to help you through and ease any situation or or help you in any way because it is that is like when stuff like that happens it's so like you're just it's so frustrating (laughs) so they're they support people in that journey um and then we have oasis and hot yoga spin studio uh safe space for you to rest your mind and gain more energy and come back to yourself again so I love it there it's always been uh, it's a beautiful space they have gorgeous plants and it'll just refresh you and revitalize you and we're so lucky to have them in our community thank you so much for being here and we'll chat with you soon my friends